five seconds left in the clock. It all comes down to this play. Quebec's got it. He's looking. He sees Barnes. He throws it, and he's got it. Look at the moves. They're crazy. Oh, oh, he's going left. Jukes one guy. Jumps over another. Barnes could go all the way. No ten. No five. Touchdown. Woo. Let's go. And the crowd goes. Wow. Wait up, man. <sighs> Little brothers. Show you guys some areas, man, a couple of houses I grew up in. Moved all around, man. I'd never stayed in one spot at all growing up. It was from house to house. No, I lived on almost every every street in Covington, man. It's just so small that you know, that kind of just happens. Man, we got a lot of corner stores around here. This one up here too, man. I'll tell you one thing. If you ever need some cologne and you don't want to pay that much money for it, they got these little roller things you roll on your on your skin, rub it in, you smell good all day. It had a strong scent to it. I used to love that thing. It cost you about five dollars. Back then that's a lot of money to me. So it was every only every so often I gave me one of those, but it lasts for a long time. This is up here, right here to the right. This is one of my favorite stories, man. We used to come down here. My cousin actually lived down the street right here. This movie right here, and that was a story. You know, had the best popsicles, the big ones. Back in the day, it was like a quarter a piece. Get three or four of them for a dollar. Now, it's probably like a dollar for one of them. It's crazy. You know, growing up, my mom, you know, she worked 24 seven. You know, went to school for hair, worked at Supercuts. Uh, you know, and, and we were younger, everything's a lot cheaper, so it's like, you just have, and you're younger, you just, you know, you can't tell the difference if, if you're rich or you're poor or you don't have it or you're, you know, low class, high class, so, and you know, and, you know, home life was good, you know, um, you know, it wasn't the best conditions, but, you know, I've seen things growing up that, you know, kind of like pushed me towards me being here today. This is where it all started right here. This is my, my old stomach grounds. What we're going through now is uh, kind of the route me and my brothers always used to take, all my siblings, cousins, and, and all that. So it was a long walk for us, you know. Wasn't fortunate enough to, you know, have the the parents, you know, take your, take your places and stuff. And not because they didn't want to. Was, mom worked a lot, so most of the time they were, you know, working. And it was really one car per family uh, growing up, so. This is about the route I used to take every day, and it's kind of crazy going through here and walking up this hill every day. And coming from elementary school, I know me and my brother I went here and all the way up to fifth grade. And this street, you know, it was every day. It was like we knew the route like the back of our hand. I probably could walk this street with my eyes closed. It was crazy. This has not changed at all. I remember it was, so it's like my school sat at this bottom of this hill and it was about a mile walk. It wasn't something like, oh, right around the street. Like it was, it was like a mile walk. So right after school, you know, people have their YMCA, they have, you know, this, ours was a boys and girls club. It was like the only thing to really do in the Covington. When I was younger, I always knew like NFL was my thing. Like I, I want to go to NFL and you know, my best days were when they had the biggest players come in and had the biggest player to toss football, help with homework, tutor, do art projects and do all this stuff. That was the best thing for me. Like, I could hang out with NFL players. Like, this is my dream. Like, it was just every day. Like, I made sure I was on time that day, right after school. Little brother, if you ain't outside the door when I get done with, you gonna get left because I'm on my way there. Why are you going so fast? It's really hot out here. Well, bro, I know it's hot, but we're almost there. Besides, first one to touch the door wins, okay? Okay. Every day after school, you know, until it closed, like we was there all, all day. We really didn't have like a schedule. I mean, it was kind of go in there and 
you know, some days like you'd be in an art room, some days you're playing basketball. Like, you know, I was like, that's why not? Like, what kid wouldn't want to go just have fun just for, you know, for, don't have to worry about nothing. You're in a safe environment. You're surrounded by people who, love, who care and love for you, want to be there for you. Like, I want to be in that environment, so I'm going to go. So, went there for, for multiple years. So, what's your name? Tayshawn. Tayshawn? You what's can call your name? Tay. Layla. Layla? What school y'all go to? Sixth district. Ninth district. You go to six? Six district? Yeah, my little brother went to uh, ninth district. Well, I, I skipped when I was five, and so I started coming here when I was six. Yeah. I started like coming it? here when I was four. Yeah, like, yeah, my used to come here all the time, man. So you play for the Detroit Lions? Mm-hmm. Was you, was you really excited when you won your first game? Yeah, man. It was. It was an exciting moment. Are you good on Madden? Yeah, I'm good on Madden, man. What you trying to you what you trying to say? Who your favorite team? He gonna say Bengals. You like the Bengals? Yeah, yeah. We also used to get uh they used to come out of the Boys Girls Club, talk to football and stuff, what is it? That's how I met uh you know Andrew Whitworth is? Play for the Bengals? Yeah, that's my man, man. That's my man. They used to come out here, man. They used to like help us with our homework and stuff and talk and do a lot of sports and stuff, but we also they used to go to like their training camp and stuff too. So, but Andrew Ruer, man, he was a he was a he was one of a kind, man. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> Y'all just outside playing? Yeah, man. I play for the Lions. The Lions. Yeah, man. This is my old. This is where I'm from originally. Yeah, I used to be. I used to go to. Uh, yep. I grew up here in Covington. I've been here since I was like one years old. Right. I was born here. Cause I remember, man, growing up, growing up out here, man, it was hard, man. This, this next where I'm about to take you, it's, it's kind of crazy, and it, it hits me a, a different way, just because you see where I come from and how far I've made it, and it, it's unbelievable. This long hill up here is probably about a mile and a half, crazy, and you just walk it. It's just, it's super steep. It just doesn't flatten out at all until you get to the top. And there used to be two passages from the Boys and Girls Club. It was either walk the woods or walk the long way, plus coming up this hill, as you can see the ride that we just took. It's, it's crazy. Um, yeah, especially on the dark nights. I, didn't, I was too young to want to walk up that trail. And people were, were killed, actually, through those woods. But you know, it was not so often, so it wasn't that bad. But you definitely had to be careful you know, walking up the hill and by yourself at nighttime. People were getting robbed up there. And, yeah, so I, I I took the long route sometimes or, or tried to catch a ride from one of the people at the Boys and Girls Club or somebody who was driving up here, so. You know, it was it was kind of tough for me uh, because I didn't really get to, you know, have the luxury of living in a household with both parents. You know, I had amazing step-parents, uh, but it was just that, you know, being around my friends that, you know, had that and you can see the connection that they had and all the siblings were in one home, mom and dad were in one home. and. You know, I kind of had an idea of that lifestyle, hanging around friends who had money, hanging around, you know, friends who never struggled, never, you know, always had a meal, had a, had food on their table, always had a roof over their head, never had to live with other people, you know, never had to struggle to, you know, to get rides to school and things like that. Cause, and I just always knew like, okay, I know people had it worse than me, but I didn't have it as good. And, you know, I always told myself like, when I get older, I want my children to have better than what I had growing up. And but it's just the areas I lived in and situations I've been in. I was just like, I don't never want this to this to happen again. So I remember when we found out we were moving up here, and you know, I was kind of upset by the situation. But you know that's all moms could do at the moment. And you know she busted her tail to, to do what she could. You know that me and my bro little brother shared a room. My brother had his own room. You know we had good beds, good full size beds. And, you know, right straight ahead, there used to be like a convention center for like young kids come down to eat. And, you know, you had to be careful. Certain, you had to be in the house a certain time. You know, I didn't heard gunshots many times up here, especially on 4th of July. If, if you don't know about, we call this the trenches. If you don't know about the trenches and, and how the people get down on 4th of July, man, it's nine times out of 10, it's, it's not a, it's not a firework, it's, it's a gun. And, you know, they weren't shooting at people, but they would shoot guns in there kind of scared me, so I made sure I wasn't here on 4th of July, but if you right down there past some stairs is where it all happened for me. Um, it was one day, you know, I came home after playing outside and kind of was, well, where's my mom? And, you know, went upstairs and she was crying and, 
and I'm wondering like, you know, what's wrong, what's going on, and it's, it's government house, and so whoever's on the lease are only people allowed to stay there, and you know, we were staying there, and we weren't, we technically weren't allowed to stay there, and I guess they had found out, and my mom, my dad told me like, you know, you guys were gonna go to a shelter home if, if you know, if you didn't move out, and, and he told me that my mom was going to a shelter home, so that just, you know, broke me right there. I'm instantly crying. I just like, I don't want my mom to go to a shelter home. Like, I'd rather be her, be there with her than her go alone. And, you know, because I got my dad, me and my little brother, we got, we got somewhere else to go. And, you know, it was kind of tough because at that moment, you know, all of you've been through with, you know, with that person, you're like, I'd rather struggle with them than, than not struggle without them, so. They said, this is another way, so. We used to take this street right here when I lived with my dad. So I moved my dad before I moved up, or you guys seen coming here to, is my dad home? Yeah, we finna, finna get out, go talk to Pops, man. My, and my granddad up here, yeah, there, right ahead. So my granddad lived right here in this White House right here. And my dad stayed right here. Dad was probably about five of us that stayed in there. This is where I watched all my big games and watched Big Wit right up there. Uh, crazy, man, because I remember remember the, the chili dip we used to have every Sunday. I look forward to that all the time. So let's get out here. Let's go ahead and go see it. Yeah, so my granddad house may have been here almost all his life. Dad right here. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? Love right here, yeah, man. man. How you feeling? You know, he started his season yesterday. You gonna ball out for him? <laughs> what they got you? What they got him playing? Oh, they, 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 they just running around having fun. Haven't played in so long, so they doing conditioning right now. Man. Yeah, man. Well. I'm glad you did that, man. You went up to, uh, to the, the boy and the girl. Mm -hmm. and remind you did it. It's crazy. You brought back memories. Though, it's crazy. Right? It ain't changed at all. Oh, it's like man. two ladies in there that's still working there since I was a little kid. Wow. And that was crazy. That's what's up. <laughs> and I sat around and played with the kids for a little about two hours, did some stuff. What school you go to right now? What you, are you at the homes right now? Yeah, I went to homes. Middle school and uh. I played football for five years. You go to the NFL? That's the plan. Mm -hmm. How your grades look, man? How school? They're proceeding. They're proceeding. You no, know, that, that's, the, that's the most important thing, man. Yeah. It's school. They get you anywhere you want to go. Little do you know, hey, if you want to play college, play play college ball. You like you like homes? Mm-hmm. It's becoming. Well, I don't really like it, but it's the school I got to go to. Yeah, I feel you. I went to homes and I went to uh, Holy Cross. That's my stomach grounds. I went to homes for like probably a semester, one football season, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, then I went to Holy Cross. From the time he was eight to the time he made his way, he's always been a dominant player. Every sport he's played. Well, he, he played, he played Little League Baseball one year. He never played a game of baseball his whole entire life. And the coach went to his dad and said, man, this boy is amazing. Right. <laughs> he never played a game of Little League Baseball. He's a superstar. Rodgers has got it, looks, now in trouble, gonna get hit, gonna go down, sack back outside the 50-yard line, Derek Barnes got it. And he did this, man, we didn't do it, we just reported him along the way, man. He did this all on his own. His dedication to what he wanted to do, man, he fulfilled his dream. He did. He, he worked his butt off to where he at, man. And I'm proud of him, like I said. Man. I appreciate you, granddad. You know, I'm not I do. gonna step in the middle of it. I just want that ring. <laughs> oh, it's coming. It really is different for me being in the NFL. You know, my family, wife, kids, like to know that I'm able and going to be able to provide that and give them the life that you know that I never had. Like that's just that really is different for me. It, it, it does, and, and, and it, hit different. it hits different because I told myself that's what I wanted. And then when I can do it, and if I can do something for someone, I'm always willing to do that. You can invest your time, you can invest your finances, or you can invest your voice. It doesn't matter which. We just have to keep investing in each other. 
Let your heart lead you all the way. I've had so many amazing experiences serving in the community, but one experience brought it all together for me this year, and it happened to me on a football field. In our game against the Detroit Lions, I had a young player from the Lions run up to me as soon as the final horn went off. And I saw him sprinting over, and I didn't know what was going on. Like we'd known each other forever. I couldn't place him. It made me so nervous. Had I actually played long enough that like a coach's son or player's son is playing against me? <laughs> what about that up to you when y'all got after y'all game that you said, oh, wait a minute. Did you say I We was playing because we was, anyway, I didn't even hear, I haven't, since then, since we was watching him on TV, I ain't heard nothing when I got to like, what was it, probably like high school. Like, I, I stopped hearing about him. Like, I don't, I ain't know. And then, but I remember he used to come to the Boys and Girls Club and when we played the Rams, I'm just like, man, I was like, is that weird? I'm like, yeah, I get, and I was, blew, blew my mind because he was still in the NFL. Big dude, 77, same number, really made me realize who he was because then, because I seen his case, like his frame and I'm like, and it was number 77, and I seen Whitworth from the back. I'm like, no way, this gotta be his little brother or something. Right. Then I seen, then I seen, then he had took his, then I took, he took his helmet off, I seen the ball head, I'm like, yeah, that's him. That's him. So then, when, at the end of the game, I'm like, man, I gotta say something to him. Like, anyway, I don't, like, I don't know what, I'm thinking in my mind, play by play, after every play, I'm like, man, what do I, what do I say to him? He stopped that, he said, hey man, you're not gonna remember me. I'm Derek Barnes. You spent time with me when you were a young player in Cincinnati at the Boys and Girls Club, and it meant the world to me. You used to sit with me and talk to me about life, and I was just a little kid. I wanted you to know how much it meant to me. I said, man. He goes, you know what? The main thing I wanted to say, Wit, I made it. I made it to the NFL, Big Wit. Wow. That's why they say like big things come with time. I remember me and him having like a one-on-one -on -one, like type of conversation because I remember telling him like, man, my dream is to play in the NFL. Like, how did you get here? Like, what did like, and you know, obviously they give you the, you know, stay in school, you know, get good grades, you know, work hard, dedication and stuff. And, and then he really just told me like, just believe in yourself, like that dream you want, like it's, it's very reachable. You know, all you gotta do is just block out, you know, never anybody tell you you can't do it. Never, never gonna nobody tell you you can't do it, man. Cause I did it, you know what I'm saying? I was sitting right here in the Boys and Girls Club just like you. And I did it, man. And you know you can do it too. But yeah, man, I wanted to tell y'all boys, man. And just let y'all know, man, y'all can do anything you put your mind to. And that was kind of important to me. And I'm just like, wow, like, you know, that conversation would never leave for me because it's just like, that's that's my goal is to be like exactly like him. And not even just for the war standpoint, just to, he made a difference in my life, like just by just those small conversations, that small time, like I want to do the same thing. Like one day I want to be able to, a kid to tell me, hey man, like, you don't know this, but you helped me out a lot. Like that's, that's my, that's one of my goals, man. It's, it's amazing. I was floored for how special that was, but I don't tell that story to say I did anything special. I hope you don't see that video and you think there's anything special about me, but I hope that you see it and you think this. On that Tuesday off day, when every guy sitting in this room has played knows, I'd rather be at home. I made an investment in him, and I didn't even know it. I think that's a great lesson for all of us. None of us know when the moment's gonna present itself. The key, is to always be available when it does. I kind of, you know, accepted my life how I was, and I honestly, like, appreciate and I thank God every day for making me go through those obstacles in life, like, making me go through that and facing an adversity. I, I love it because that's who I am, the person I am today, and that's what I've been doing my whole life, is just one thing bad happens, I always believe that there's light at the end of the tunnel, and I believe that, you know, when it's bad happening in your life, that something's good gonna come out of it. And it's just how you react. Like, I always tell myself, when something bad happens, I just be like, God is testing me right now. I just think he's testing me right now, seeing how I react and see how I recover from the situation, so. I am Derek Barnes.